Previously on The Code, Life with the Mariners. That's where it was important with the players getting out in the community and the, and the players becoming heroes to the local kids. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> the kids have to find a say. If they want to go back for uh, friends and study and whatever, then we go back. If they want to stay, I'm happy to stay, I love it. He's always willing to listen, he's always willing to give advice, and I think that's what helps make him the, the coach that he is. Out! Oh, yep! Ah. There are 27 rounds in the Hyundai A-League season. Keeping players fresh throughout the campaign is a science. And the physical toll is managed and monitored. The mental application, however, is more complicated, with the coaches searching for new ways to refocus the players each week. OK, I want to sit on the bench tomorrow night, be entertained, like you are every week, entertaining. The derby is for the supporters. It's another game for us. Now we've got a target on our back. Everyone wants to beat us. So tomorrow night, it starts. Whole new chapter. Round nine is done. 20 points. First third of the competition, 20 points. Five points better than last year. More goals scored, less conceded. Take the confidence. And I, again, the arrogance, I like it. I like the arrogance. Take it into the game tomorrow night, but no complacency. Good. The F3 motorway connects two traditional rugby league hotbeds, but the Hunter and Central Coast's continued love affair with football is indicative of the growth of the A-League. This is my fourth season and uh, it's grown every year and you can just see by the players that we're attracting to this league and I think the quality uh, as well is, is improving. Del Piero, Heskey, Ono and I think it's just the tip of the iceberg. We've got Socceroos coming back to play and uh, people are starting to notice more that the Australian game is growing. The growth of football in New South Wales is manifested by a near capacity crowd at Hunter Stadium tonight. The Mariners continue to play as a unit. The awkward, unpredictable nature of the early rounds gives way to a more fluid, cohesive performance. But not without a few speed bumps. I just come back from uh, from an injury, and I was only in the team for I think uh, two two to three weeks before I had this uh, head collision that um, you'll probably see in a minute. <laughs> but Zanuck's injury does little to slow the Mariners' momentum, and the McBreen machine whirls into motion. at the watch from Jared Gillett and that'll do the 28th F3 derby goes the way of the Mariners and they were utterly utterly ruthless tonight revenge for the defeat here earlier on in the season for Graham Arnold's team who returned to the top of the A-League courtesy of a double by the Nova Castri and Daniel McBreen and they can sign the Jets to a fourth game in a row without a win And I was a bit disappointed at half time that we, you know, we we had four good chances first half that we we butchered. And uh, so I said to the boys at half time, "Is uh, keep doing what you're doing, but let's have some killer instinct." I never knew that because it's a free kick. Yeah. Anyway, I'm pitching. Give it next to you. 
Anywhere else on a pitch, you can just touch it. We've created our own depth in the squad uh, by giving kids a go, and uh, and the kids have come on a lot. No, no, no fair thing. No, he said he's 35, and he said, you know, uh, what do I have to do to get an, an, another year contract? I said, get get double figures and let's talk. And he's he's one away. I didn't expect it to happen this early, though. <laughs> I have to say. You guys seem to be flying under the radar almost. Do you like that? Yeah, it's great because you know we're the only game in New South Wales tonight, and the Sydney Journos haven't come up to see us. So it's good. <laughs> we can stay under the radar if that happens. When we have our Christmas party, it's not just for the players, it's for the families, for the staff, for anyone who wants to come and, and have a good time with the players. Um, I think that's what this club stands for, you know. It's a great family club. It's a club that everyone's welcome once they're in, involved and whether they go away to play for another club, um, they always come back here and train and, you know, it's like they've never left. You know, I don't think there's any club in Australia that could uh, ever have a culture like that. We've got players at the club who, over the last three seasons of being here, haven't played a minute of first team football during any particular season and, and they've been fantastic guys. I think when you've got that um, togetherness off the pitch um, with regards to the staff and the players uh, and everyone wants the same thing, I think it becomes much easier to attain. If I told you I knew everything, it'd just be bullshit. Um, so, and I don't bullshit. So, it's not nah, a lot to learn, a lot to go, and probably the big surprise that I didn't realise things ten t took as long to to turn things round. You know, it's like you know when you start something, it takes a long, long time. Being a football coach, you you want something done, you change it, and it happens. Um, so this way, it's a wee bit. It's like turning the Titanic round. Laurie McKinnon was the Mariners' first head coach, but despite retiring from that position three years ago, it has not tempered his contribution to football or the community. TV, media, everywhere. Yeah, when I came back from China, um, I was over there coaching for a year at Chongqing, Li Fan and Chengdu. I came back to Central Coast Mariners as general manager of football. Do I look really official? Do I look like a mayor? It was a good opportunity to come back to, you know, and then the council thing come up and. Then within, um, within a few weeks, I was running a campaign for um, Gosford Council, which was very successful. And then um, a couple of weeks later, I'm the mayor. I'll just take you um, outside here to introduce the girls who make the council tick. And they're going to be really shy here, but um, Ariella's just taking her glasses oh, off. Thanks. Ariella usually sits over here, and she looks after the nine other councillors. And Jenny, who's basically the first lady, she looks after the big fella. Isn't that right, girls? Yes. <laughs> you can see more than that. Don't yes, need to be in there. Yeah. <laughs> and they're the ones who've done that picture through there of me. So I'm going to get them arrested. I'm going to get them arrested for defacing. I mean, here's the wall of shame. All the past mayors, and I'm not too happy because I'm down the bottom. And I, I don't know if it's because I'm the last one in, but I'm not happy about the picture being down here. I'm trying to get them rearranged, but not been successful yet. And as you can see, some of the punters have got um, the red robes on, but I'll not be wearing them, I can assure you. I'll put the jewellery on now again, but um, I'll leave the robes in the, in the wardrobe. Here's, a, here's the crown jewels. Um, it's the first time in my life that I've had more jewellery than my wife. Look at it. This is the first time ever. And it'll be the last time. This will be the last time. This is for the code only. 
I could wear this as Santa down the street. You're taking the piss. <laughs> <laughs> is that a beard? And that's your little beard. <laughs> it goes on your tie. This is the 20th it's century, you know. Button. Or maybe that's like Christine's frilly knickers. Things I do for Central Coast Marmers. So, the night when I came in here for the first meeting was like getting ready for a grand final again. My guts was all over the place and for the first time in a long time I was probably out of my comfort zone because I didn't know what to do. I'd never been to a council meeting before, never mind being the mayor. Yes. Don't, hey, don't cry because we're not going to see each other for a few days. I know. Be strong. Be strong. Local football is growing due to McKenna's persistence and our Gosford's community will also benefit if he can juggle his schedule. Thanks. I've cut down some hours at the Mariners because obviously juggling two jobs is, is very difficult, but you know, it, it's going okay. You know, um, I, I live out a diary just now and um, seven days a week doing either football stuff or doing council stuff. Can you remember me? I'm the one who speaks funny. Tickets please. Body search, body search. Search I'll the mayor. I'll cut you down, I'll get arrested. The mayor's never had a body search for one of the staff before at the Gosford Council. Yeah, My hat's going to blow. Let's welcome him. It's our new mayor, Laurie McKenna! Oh, Put your hands together for Laurie. Does anyone here support the Mariners? <laughs> despite his mayoral duties, McKenna still feels the emotion of game day, despite nowadays sitting in a different part of the stadium. I come in about an hour before the game and um, you know, and it's, it's nice coming to the game quite relaxed and, and not having that pre-match nerves. You still get the nerves just for the team to win. As a coach when you're on the sidelines, you enjoy the game when you win. Um, and sometimes that only lasts for a few minutes because you start thinking about next week. The regional crossover of football, community and local government means that the rewards of the Mariners' success are reaped by all. And I was the mayor when we built the stadium and the stadium at that stage was about rugby league coming here and then we got the opportunity that that, that fell through and as that fell through and came the Mariners and I tell you they've just been embraced. As a rugby league man I actually come to the stadium for the Mariners matches and I see rugby league, I see rugby union supporters, I see AFL supporters because they want their own team and they've embraced the Mariners. We've had to deal with you know, 90 minutes of excitement and fun and still 0-0, zero, zero. <laughs> that's hard to accept. Yeah, but it's still a good game. It's still a good game. I saw the 7-2 shellacking that they gave uh, Sydney so, FC, yeah. and I was really, really glad that I was here. It was a bit of a historic moment for the coast, but so, uh, they So great. does that give you some bragging rights when you go to Parliament down Absol in Canberra? Absolutely, yeah, we're the premier team, and, you know, we come from the best part of the country as well. So, yeah, this is a, this is a great place. And having the Mariners here really just adds a whole lot of connection for the community because everybody comes here and we all cheer together. Same location a few days later. The Melbourne Heart are in town but provide little resistance to the Mariners machine who, leading into the busy Christmas period, are starting to put opponents under increasing pressure. But it is Bowich, he's got the curl! around the post by Clint Bolton at full stretch. Miss McGlinchey, but Bowich ran onto it. And now trying his luck. Clint Bolton has made a hash of it. And Tex Bowich celebrates. A goal out of nowhere from the right back. And Clint Bolton is trying to work out how. Is Bowich driving it and he's beaten Bolton again. Well, Pitch Bowich is saying, Can I play the heart every week? He's got three against them this season. Well, there's no doubt he packs some gunpowder behind this, Pitch Bowich. But I feel Clint Bolton just got wrong footed. It's a pretty amazing feeling when you score it, especially when it's. You know, it's a tough, tough uh, period of the game, or if it's nil or if it's like a winning goal or something, it's just an amazing feeling. Sometimes it happens too quick, you don't even realise, and when you look back on the replays, you, you get even more excited because you have the time to, to um, adjust to it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Arnie's post-match chat is for players only, a sign that despite the win, focus is being immediately reapplied for the coming weeks in which three games will be played in nine days. Uh, personally, very good for getting a double goal like that, but um, even more pleasing than the fact that we've got the three points and the clean sheet still top of the table. It's something that I practiced during the week, and you know, lucky enough they came off. Uh, the first half one I thought was close to going in, uh, and glad enough to get the second one, that which we went in and might have put him off a bit. During halftime at last night's game, a familiar face has returned to be honoured by the club. Former captain Alex Wilkinson's off-season transfer previously denied him the ovation he so richly deserved. Yeah, obviously, uh, I didn't get a chance when I left the club to say thank you to uh, all the members and the fans who have supported not only me, but uh, you know, the Mariners over the first seven seasons of the A-League. So, uh, I'm glad I got a chance to come back tonight and say a big thank you to everyone and uh, it's great to see so many people here in numbers uh, supporting the boys. Yeah, it was a bit strange walking in and, you know, walking in ten minutes before kickoff and finding a seat and all that sort of stuff even up in the grandstand. Not too used to that, but uh, it was great. I, I sort of left in uh, July in the off-season and didn't get a chance to, to say goodbye to all the fans and the members, so it was nice that they, they invited me back and um, made a presentation. When the A-League first started, it was an interesting time because I don't think football on the Central Coast was, was huge. And, um, you know, it's great to see now, seven years um, down the track, that how much the Mariners have grown and how much they've become a household name in the community. And, you know, back then we did a lot of work um, establishing ourselves as a, you know, community-based club. And it did take a while to take off. But um, now that, you know, the team's been so successful and, uh, We've got great community support and fan support. It's, it's so good to see the club going from strength to strength and um, doing so well. And I enjoyed my time there um, thoroughly. You know, I've, I've got a really soft spot for the club and love the club and would love to play there again sometime. But at the moment, obviously, um, I'm trying something new and a new experience. But um, it's great to see the boys doing so well again this year. Currently playing in Korea's K League, the Central Coast is never far from the heart and mind of the 156 game A-League veteran. My wife and I uh, still got the house here in, in Terrigal and uh, it's a fantastic place in the world. Um, we've got a young son now who, who we can just take down to the beach uh, every day and it's just nice having that flexibility to be able to um, you know, live a, such a, a great life. As is the transient nature of football, when one legend departs, another arrives to fill this place. You know, I lived in the UK and played in the UK for the last 14 years and you know, since I had the children, uh, I always wanted to you know, give them a, a nice place to grow up and I don't think there's a better place in Australia. Um, like I say, I could have stayed in England, I had the opportunity to stay in England, but when the opportunity came to, to come to Australia, um, you know, obviously I looked into it, did a bit of background research on the Central Coast and um, everybody that, that I'd spoke to said it was a beautiful place and, Obviously the Mariners are a successful team, so everything, everything seemed to work and like I say, it, you know, it was something that I wasn't going to turn down. Um, Nick and I had never been to Australia, so we didn't quite know what to expect, apart from what we'd seen on Home and Away and Neighbours. Um, but it's beautiful, people are beautiful, the place is beautiful and the children are loving it. Oh. Wow. <laughs> 
it's just so nice to be able to be out and about. In England it's very hard because the weather's so bad most of the time. Um, so the children and I have been very active since we've got here. Yeah, you can win down. She can go splashing it if she wants. She's got a lot. Come on then. Come on, Coco. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Nick has excelled since he's been here. He just loves it. He jokes saying that he should have always been an Aussie because his favourite food in the UK was banana bread and it's sold here in every shop that we go to and every cafe and he had to get the lady at Chef United to make it for him specially back home. You know you don't have to care what you're wearing, um, you know I tend to just wear shorts and flip-flops as I call them every day but you know it's just a fantastic place you know to have a young family to be able to go home to and go down to the beach and you know do things that I never got a chance to do when I was a, when I was a kid. It's, for me, you know, I'm very proud that I've been able to provide that for my family. All the players seem to live in um, close proximity, so us wives tend to hang out a bit more. So people just come and knock on the door and say, hi, I'm here to have a barbecue, and you're like, okay. Uh, we're in the UK, um, you write that in your diary for two weeks' time. All games are televised, um, which we don't get that back home because obviously there's too many teams. So it's really good and especially as I've got the children, I can sit at home and watch and be part of it. <laughs> Leah, what was that face? Australia's laid-back lifestyle allows the Montgomery's to fit in, unrecognised and unbothered. An existence vastly different to the UK but the result of years of hard work from an early age. It's every boy's dream and I was no different than you know, most of the young boys growing up in all over the world. You know, right from probably 10 years old, I decided I wanted to play football and I had nothing else on my mind. So you know, I dedicated myself to, to being a footballer, worked as hard as I could. You know, it wasn't always easy, but I made my breakthrough at 17, um, playing in the championship in England at a big club like Sheffield United with great history. Um, and from then on, I went on to make 400 appearances and I was fortunate to play in the Premier League and FA Cup semi-finals, League Cup semi-finals, playoff finals. So I've had some fantastic memories. Um, and, you know, I'm still 31 now. I was 30 years old when I arrived at the Mariners and, you know, I hopefully I've got a lot more to come. Next time, on the code, life with the Mariners. Up the back, put all the big stuff in the back. We're delayed probably about an hour and a half at the moment, could be a lot longer. It's two days before Christmas, so all the boys want to get home. My son turned five yesterday, so I want to get home and, and have a bit of birthday cake with him, but this is the life of a footballer sometimes, you know, we've got to make sacrifices. Give me four minutes. Give me the rest, another four minutes, a rest, and give me another four minutes. Maybe you go f yourself. <laughs> hey! Hey! What the f is that? What's that? He's launched himself from three meters. That's a disgrace.